Okay, B's and G's, we'll get to actual reviews soon enough, but like most of you, I have now seen Microsoft's new Xbox unveiling slash presentation slash giant train wreck. And there's really no way I can't sound off. P.S. Don't turn your sound off. First and foremost, I'm obligated to sedate any fanboy bullshit that will inevitably show up. Because, you know, it's all racial. And the Sony press conference, for what it was, was nothing great, but it was exactly what it needed to be. A few hiccups, sure, and by hiccups, I mean shoot that motherfucker. But it is hard to put your finger. But ultimately, it did everything but show us the box, and for three hours kept me interested and engaged by talking about games and showing games. Seems pretty obvious, right? And just about all of said games were exclusive to PS4. Because, you know, it's a PS4 conference. Simple enough, right? Right? It sounds simple and obvious, and it should be, but today it isn't. So why is it that for the first half hour we didn't see any games? Nothing. Fucking nothing. You know what they did? They showed off how your Xbox can be a VCR and media center. Xbox, go home. For half the show. And the sad truth was, I kind of knew they were going to do that. You know how I knew? Because that's what they did at their last three E3s every year. While Sony was talking about games and new IPs, Microsoft spent most of their presentations going, look, Hulu and Netflix. You can do Hulu and Netflix. Tune into next year's E3 where we can find new ways to do Hulu and Netflix. And nobody cares. It's 2013. My left nut has Hulu and Netflix. Starving kids in Africa are watching cooking shows on Hulu and Netflix. And I don't know how to break it to you, but hitting input is actually faster than this. There's a great new feature called instant switching. Xbox, game. I'm not quite sure how it appears that you don't understand that. Go to music. But it would appear that you don't understand. Watch TV. I'm so sorry. Yes, that fast. Did you see how instant that was? Uh, I think they're clapping for her. Switching between live TV and all my games entertainment is now as fast as switching channels on your TV remote. No, no it's not. There's no waiting. You can switch to your game like it's a TV channel flip. I can do that now. Ugh. And they're promoting live TV again. As if they haven't done this how many times already. And it gets better every time. And it's not so much who cares as it is, what is it that's preventing PS4 from also doing this? Do you see where I'm going with this? Yeah, you have an updated Kinect interface. So does PS4, which is why Sony mentioned it for a second and moved on. Because it was no longer a distinctive characteristic. It's like saying, that girl's real hot. You know why? She has skin and some bones too. They spent 10 fucking minutes showing Skype. Skype! Ugh. We know what Skype is. Y you know how we know what Skype is? We saw your last three fucking press conferences. And no one saw it coming three more times. So now... We're about to change entertainment forever. Again. Here we go again. Again. Ugh. Don't waste your precious spotlight time showing me shit that my phone already does. I'd like to be able to watch this on my television while hooked into my mobile device, which is being controlled by my tablet device, which is hooked into my oven, all while sitting in the refrigerator. <laughs> It's not like Sony didn't spend time showing new functionality and sharing, they did, but what they showed was game-centric and frankly more interesting and innovative, like spectating and even taking over someone else's game to help out, actual friends lists in addition to, you know, finding and editing video, sharing, etc. And more importantly, they did all of that in like three minutes, not 30. And not all sports, only to do it again 10 minutes later. Okay, so the half hour VCR tutorial is over and we're left with 30 minutes of what should only be non-stop game footage, right? Right? Fuck no. What we got was, well, this. Xbox is about to become the next water cooler. Now, I'm not saying developer interviews are bad. This is what, to some degree, everyone does. Developers talk about what they're doing, their goals, blah, 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 blah. Sony did it too, but it's usually juxtaposed with fucking game footage.
and by game footage, I mean shit that looks finished. The vast majority of actual game video shown at their already brief conference was shaded alpha footage, which didn't impress anyone. It's not that we don't care, we just don't care right now. It's been eight years, show us some finished shit. You know, those, uh, whatchamacallums, games. And that's where Microsoft really fucked up, the games. Because with the exception of not Turismo and a brief glimpse at who gives a fuck, everything they showed was cross-platform. That's right. They spent the vast majority of their presentation advertising PS4 games. If you were watching the Sony conference every two minutes, you'd think, oh, that looks cool. I gotta get that for PS4. And if you're watching the Microsoft conference, you'd think, oh, that looks cool. I gotta get that for PS4. Which really should not have been Microsoft's goal. <laughs> What's worse is that the majority of the footage they showed in their trailers was live action. What? Do you think it's safe where we're going? What? Is this the 90s? You've only got the latter 30 minutes to show off games and you're playing this shit. Why? For fuck's sake, why? Are you sure you wanna know? And what's worse is that the big build up at the end, the big show, was Call of Duty. Call, call it, not Halo, not Gears of War, or, uh, Viva Pinata 2, I don't care. Something exclusive for fuck's sake. And what's worse is that, while well, the game sure looks purdy enough, it still wasn't nearly as purdy as the Battlefield 4 footage that's been out for a while now. Shit! It didn't even have any aliasing, which was actually pretty noticeable. And this is what they're hanging their hat on? So added an AI system to it, so we have fish move out of the way when you get close to them. This is just a clusterfuck of bad decisions. Unless, of course, you're Sony, who just got an hour of free advertising. And nothing Microsoft showed looked nearly as good as Sony's Fanta Ray engine. And yes, haters, it was all running in real time. Stop having Killzone trailer flashbacks, it's time to move on. Oddly enough, of everything they unveiled, of everything they showed, the only real surprise, the only thing that caught me off guard that I'm kind of looking forward to, is a Halo TV series? What? I mean, they didn't show anything, but yeah, Steven Spielberg introduced it, it sounds pretty cool, but that like, that was like one of their big exclusive content things. And, I mean, it's adorable that they think it's exclusive. <coughs> Aww. And frankly, calling it Xbox One is stupid. It's the Xbox One is a stupid name. Don't argue with me, I'm right. And it's only gonna get worse with time. When PlayStation came out, no one called it PS1, but since there were further PlayStations, it ended up being called PS1. So look at Microsoft's numbering. It's retarded. Like Rambo retarded. It's like Microsoft asked their marketing department, what's the best way to confuse people's grandparents and ensure a ruined birthday? What's worse than everything here is what wasn't here. Not everything has been set in stone yet, but most of the tech leaks and rumors have been proven true since Microsoft's announcement, which looks to ultimately leave the console about 50% weaker than the PS4. Some of you might say that was true for the last gen in principle, but most game ports look better on the 360 anyway. This was the result of the PS3's whacked out architecture cell processor, which had a crazy steep learning curve. And by steep, I mean Naughty Dog and Kojima figured it out, and pretty much no one else did. But that isn't really the case anymore since both new consoles are going for the more developer-friendly PC in a box, which means that the 50% of extra power will actually get used this time, and the PS4 exclusives will be noticeably better looking. What's even sadder, and just goes to show how inept Microsoft was, is that prior to this conference, there was really just one single lingering question that people wanted to know. Will the Xbox be always connected? Meaning, games will or will not function at all without an active internet connection. This has in fact already happened this gen with some shitty DLC content and PC games, and we all know how that shit worked out. Issues with SimCity may have been the last nail in the coffin at VA's popularity today as they've been named worst company in America for the second time running by the consumerist. Ugh. So will it be always connected or not? Everyone wanted to know. It wasn't a secret question, it, it wasn't a techie question, it was an everyone question. And knowing this, in their whole hour, they didn't mention it at all. It wasn't until 60 seconds after the shit was over that Jeff Keighley asked Don Matrick if Xbox One always required internet, to which he gave a simple no. 
And it's not like Jeff was the only guy. See these guys? They all wanted to know too. <sighs> I went into this expecting to be surprised, hopefully impressed. I don't know, whatever, but not this. And don't get me wrong, it, it's not the console's fault. But as far as introduction to next gen is concerned, this level of deafness and ineptitude is nothing short of pathetic. Ugh. All right, let's fucking do this. <laughs> Lindsay Lohan Award. Cause sure, we wanted to see more, but you're not really exclusive these days. And it seems like all you have left to offer is skin and bones. Please, Lindsay, eat a hamburger. Xbox, go home. What?